Here we have a Sony Vio 20 all in one. We're going to open up and explore the insides. So remember to put your all in one on something soft so you don't damage or scratch it when you move it around. And we're going to flip it face down as we need to access the back. So open it up and put your stand back down. So now that we have flipped to the back, we're going to remove the back cover. This back cover is nothing. There's no screws holding it down. It's just magnetic screws, I believe. Magnetic cover, sorry. Now we're going to remove the battery. This battery is actually a Dell battery. Pretty sure it is. So if you need to find a replacement, get it from Sony or Dell. We now got to remove the stand first. Yeah. So we need to remove the two stand covers. It blocks the stand. There's one screw holding each cover down. And under each cover, there's four screws holding the stand. So after you remove the screws, there's a little gap area that you can put your finger in or your prying tool in to lift it up slightly. So you just take it off and it reveals the stand. Each side has four screws. So now we remove the screws, you just lift it off and it comes off. We're now going to remove the cover to remove your hard drive. There's one screw holding the hard drive cover down. And this screw does not come off. So this is a 2.5 inch hard drive and there's four, in four screws holding it down. This only can fit one hard drive, and this is your only hard drive. See, so after you remove it, just lift it up, and it comes off. Just wiggle it out a bit. My hard drive is already removed. Next, we're going to remove the RAM cover. There's one screw holding the RAM cover down, and this screw doesn't come off, it stays on. There's only two RAM slots, and these are laptop RAM, so that's maximum of 16 gigs. So just press pull, pull apart the two sides, and the RAM pops up, and just take it out. We need to remove, remove this small cover. There's one screw holding this cover down, and this screw comes off. There's two strings under there. One is your power cable and one is your Ethernet cable. We need to remove them as they attach to the back cover. And when we remove the back cover, it comes off. So now we need to remove this cover as well. This cover here is has controls to your wireless card I believe or NFC it should be NFC so there's one cable under here you just pull out the cable there's no clips you just pull it out and pull, pull it back in so 
So now to remove the back cover, I need to point, point to you out the screws to remove the back cover. There's also four screws on the bottom where the speaker are. They cover by rubber grub and some rubber coverings. So to remove the back cover, there's a total of three types of screws. The screw you see me removing now, the first two screws, including this one, this is the third screw. This is the fourth screw. These screws are the same. There should be around six of them. There are six, six of them are the same screw. The four screws at the bottom where the speaker is, covered with rubber, rubber grommets or rubber fittings. They are different types of screws as well. And there's one screw where the battery is. That is by itself. And it's a different type of screw. So here, here's the one screw, the battery screw. You need a small screwdriver as the screw is small. Just going to take the screw out and show you. So here, you really need to remove the rubber fittings. Just get a screwdriver and poke it, it comes off. There's no glue holding it down or adhesive strip. So you just poke it a bit and it'll um, flex and bend and it'll come off. So now that I've removed all the screws, you're going to need to get your prying tool. You either can try to remove it, but that's not going to work. Use your prying tool to go around the edges. So the edges is the difference between is where the glass is and where the plastic starts. So that's how it works. So once you go around halfway, when you pry it halfway open, it goes it gets relatively easy to open. I'm just gonna move it off screen slightly as it's easier for me to pry. So now I'm done, I just need to lift it up and it comes off. We're going to remove this cable, that's your power cable, where your on button volume control is. So that's your CPU, that's your fan, sp subwoofer, two speakers. 
LCD backlight control, wireless wireless antenna, and wireless antenna again on the monitor. So we're going to remove the fan. So we remove the fan power cable first. That blue thing I've just pointed to is actually the LCD cable. And we need to remove five screws to remove the heatsink. Four screws on the CPU, one screw holding the heatsink down. So there's four screws on top. We need to remove these four screws to remove the fan. And there's one screw under the sticker. So just pry, peel it back a bit to remove it. So now that we remove all the screws, it just comes off easily. I'm just going to show you where the dust builds up. And as you can see, there's a bit of dust. Get your vacuum cleaner and clean it. Or your toothbrush, whatever you like to use. There's also thermal paste on it that we have to remove. Remember, every time we remove the heating, we have to replace and clean the old thermal paste. So I'm just going to get a towel and clean it off. You don't need any special liquids or anything to clean it. Just use your towel or tissue. Try not to use soft tissue as it breaks and it falls onto your computer. It gets annoying. There you go. I'll just clean off the thermal paste. Just wipe it until it looks clean and that will be enough. I just get I just went to get my vacuum cleaner to clean off the dust. So you can do whatever you want, use your vacuum cleaner or use a toothbrush. You can use your air hose, air ho air ga can, air can or whatever it is. It doesn't really work that well. Using two brushes is a lot better and a vacuum cleaner. So now I'm going to show you again, as you can see, it looks a lot cleaner now and looking at the fan, it looks a lot cleaner than before. So, this is the thermal paste I'm using, Noctua NTH1. Don't be cheap on your thermal paste, as it's, you only use it once in your life, and it's really important. Only put a one rice grain size of C thermal paste on your CPU, and that's enough. Put it in the center. Do not spread it out. Now we need to put our fan back.
Now I'm going to put the heatsink back on after this, since we just screwed it on. Align it first, don't press it down until you have confirmed that it's aligned properly. Then you can press it down. Normally heatsinks have um, numbers next to the screw hole to tell you which groove to screw it down on. This one doesn't. So just follow how I screw it back in and you should be fine. So the idea is to screw it back in a crisscross pattern. As you see uh, what I'm doing. I don't know why there's no numbers on the heating as this is the first time I saw it. All other manufacturers leave numbers on it. to screw in your heatsink back and also plug in your fan power cable or else your fan won't get power so to remove your wireless card there's one screw holding your wireless card down like the there's actually two screws holding this wireless card down normally there's only one after you remove it pops up like the RAM just remove it, you can replace it with any wireless card that fits in the hole. I'm just going to put it back as I don't really need to remove it anymore. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. This disassembly is relatively really easy. There's no reason why to remove your back cover as it doesn't give you access to really anything besides your wireless card and your CPU and your CPU cannot be changed. So opening the quick access panel gives you access to your RAM and hard drive and that should be enough. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.